Yeah. It's a great trans it's a great transitional question. Okay. Then we move on. You know, next we have the task of uh, doing this. I just want to say while we're here, um, actually you know what? I'll do these two in tandem with one another. See, I always use the never one. Unless anyone in the room has extra vision, that's probably difficult to see. Okay. So, next, we have the task of figuring out how to solve this problem, right? Versus, uh, through Krugman and Ferguson's responses, the reader can absorb. So both of those, uh, both of those take a starting point, right? And then point to something that happens after it which is how you get, and next, and through, intermediate between them. Correct? But what were we saying about through on Friday? Um, yeah, through isn't very descriptive. Through is about as descriptive as the word and. Um, uh, imagine listening to a five-year-old tell you about their day, and then we went to the store and we got milk, and we rode in the car, and then we came home, and we took them out of the back of the car, and then there was this dog, and I saw it, and I saw this lollipop, and mom didn't let me eat it, and you're like, shut up. Um, <laughs> what, the reason that it's annoying is because little kids can't, is because little kids can't, uh, can't order um, their experiences in terms of causal relationships. Right? They can say what happened one thing after the other, but they have a really hard time figuring out that A caused B. Next imposes an order. Next says, we can only do, uh, we can only solve this problem after we know what we're dealing with. So, so Blake is setting up a, uh, an order to the argument that seems pretty logical, right? You can't do B before you do A. I mean, it's not explicit in what he's saying, but it's implicit. He's setting up an order in order to bring us logically uh, from his proposition to his conclusion. But then when he says through, it's very hard to see what through is actually doing. Through Krugman and Ferguson's responses, does that mean by reading Krugman and Ferguson's responses? The reader can absorb the opposing viewpoints and consider the potential consequences of employing these set of practices. So that's what you get out of Krugman and Ferguson's responses. But it seems way too general. I mean, you're talking about strategies here. You're talking about the nature of the problem up here. And down here, you're just talking about the reader absorbing of, uh, opposing viewpoints. I think that I think that a lot of us have the tendency and I don't just mean you guys, I mean, I mean me too, and everybody who writes. We, all, we always have a tendency to sort of like back away from what we're doing at the end of the paragraph to try to capture what it was that we were doing. Like, so you say a few specific things, and then you commit less to them so that you can capture them all. That's not the way to capture the idea. The way to capture the idea is to overcommit, right? Because you ha if you have said something, you're only going to crystallize it by going for it, okay? So I want to rewrite this sentence. How do we close this paragraph? Let's stick with the readers and see if that works. By reading, um, oops, by reading Krugman's and Ferguson's respective diagnoses of the problem and prescriptions for its solution. Readers, what? I don't actually think we can answer that question. That's a trick. Sorry. Like, what is it that a reader's going to get out of it? The reader's going to get out of it a clear idea of the problems and the possible solute, the possible ways of finding the problem and the possible ways of finding the solution. We already said that, right? 
Instead, what we've got here is what we're dealing with, how to solve this problem, right? Exactly the same thing that we had up here. The state of the nation, the response, right? So present, future, present, future, present, future. Stick with that frame, okay? So instead of saying, by reading this, by reading A and B, the readers will get A and B, right? Say, by reading A, readers will get B. So by reading Krugman and Ferguson's respective diagnoses of the problem, um, we can determine which is the better, I'm sorry, by analyzing Krugman and Ferguson's respective diagnoses of the problem, we can determine which is the better prescription for its solution. Does everybody see what that does? But isn't that making you pick one solution over the other, which is going to be, I mean, that means that you're imposing your economic expertise into this other. Yeah, right. So what Brian is asking is, what Brian is asking is, uh, aren't you making exactly the mistake, John, that you said uh, is probably a mistake? That is, in saying that you know more about economics than Mal Ferguson and Paul Krugman. Um, maybe um, you could be, um, and a lot of you, uh, a lot of you hedged a lot in your papers and said, I'm not trying to say I know more than them, but, and that's a good first step, right? But you do want to say something after that. Blake, for instance, um, did sort of take a position after a careful analysis, but it was sort of a provisional position. And I think that, and so A, this suits the paper, and B, um, which is a cop-out answer for me, and B, um, I think the claim it makes is fairly reasonable that if you're presented with two, two diametrically opposed opinions and they're both well-informed commentators, it's not an unreasonable thing to eventually, after careful consideration, to side with one or the other. Um, yeah, that can be done. Yes. Um, there are other ways of analyzing the problem in terms of just staying on a level of abstraction where you're talking about the big ideas that are at play. Um, yeah, but um, one can do it this way. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm.